What's going on, YouTube? Today, I bring you my tight end rankings for the 2021 NFL Draft. Uh, let me know your guys' rankings down below. Uh, also want to say um, congratulations, Alex Smith, to a fantastic football career as he retired today. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into our tight end rankings. Starting at number one, there is no surprise here. It's Kyle Pitts. And honestly, I'm tempted to start saying that this is the best player in the class in yes above trevor lawrence i mean the dude literally has the potential to be the greatest tight end of all time and i can say that pretty confidently his floor is being like a number one probably top 10 tight end like this dude is just amazing he's one of my favorite prospects i've ever scouted a big reason why kyle trask was even near as good as he was last year um there is not a single bad thing about this guy the one thing you can kind of say is that like his blocking isn't the best but it's still good like my comp for him is tony gonzalez simply just because that's the best tight end of all time and kyle pitts i mean i i can pretty confidently say unless something you know derails his career he'll go down as at least a top 10 tight end of all time but he can be the best tight end of all time this dude is crazy athletic um, people are comparing him to Calvin Johnson, um, Kevin Durant even. I mean, this dude is insane. And um, I'm feeling more and more confident that the Falcons simply just take this guy because he is such an incredible talent. I love Kyle Pitts. Moving on to number two, we have Pat Fryermuth. A lot of people have Brevin Jordan here. And, you know, I, I'm buying into the Pat Fryermuth hype though. You know, my comp for him is Rob Gronkowski because to me, he is the best blocker in this class. And of course, Rob Gronkowski is the best blocking tight end of all time. Uh, however, like like Gronk, they're much more than just their blocking. They're also great route runners and just all around good receivers. Where they both struggle is that their speed is not elite, but it's not bad per se. So Pat Fryermuth is still a fantastic tight end. I don't think he'll go first, although he could sneak up there. You know, maybe the Jaguars could be a sneaky pick there in the first. Um, but, you know, Pat Fryermuth, another guy that has the potential to be like a top 10 tight end, not of all time, but in the league. And uh, at the worst, I think he's, you know, okay depth. Um, I can maybe see, you know, his um, his athleticism and his speed holding him uh, back a bit. But otherwise, Pat Fryermuth is a great tight end and he's my number two. Then with number three, we have Brevin Jordan. Um, you know, I get the hype behind this guy. Um he is literally kyle pitts but just not as good i don't want to call him a dollar store kyle pitts because do not sleep on this guy i mean this guy is another guy that you know i think he actually has a higher floor than pat fryer booth but i also think he has uh, or i'm sorry he has a lower floor but i also think he has a higher higher ceiling than pat fryer booth um I, I call him a two dollar store kyle pitts because you know again i don't want to sleep on him he's like still a great tight end um but he's no kyle pitts that's for sure um, as a receiver, he's one of the best, you know, in college football along with Kyle Pitts. And like Kyle Pitts, you know, he also struggles at blocking sometimes. Now, some people say that his blocking is the best in the class. And personally, I don't see that. I don't think his blocking is uh, really that good at all. But um, as a receiver, you know, as a um, just a straight up uh, catching tight end, he's going into the league probably is one of the best. Uh, but one of the more boomer bust prospects prospects for me this year so i put him at number three um by the way i don't know why it says wide receiver it's supposed to be tight end but uh brevin jordan here at number three then at number four we have tommy tremble out of notre dame and uh, this is a guy that i'm really starting to pick up on like a few other people uh my comp for him is johnny smith these both of these guys are very very hyper athletic um he's very speedy as well and a pretty good blocker the one thing that he does struggle with is running his routes um, and he is not like the most uh, sensible tight end. You know, he's not going to ever be Travis Kelsey. He's not going to be, um, you know, George Kittle. But I think he can be a, a pretty good tight end. You know, he can be your number one. But I also think he can be a bust pretty easily just because he is not a good route runner at all. And that's something you can fix, of course. But uh, he's not a good route runner. And at times his blocking definitely leaves something to be desired. Uh, so another kind of one of those boomer bust projects for me. I think he's gonna be a third rounder. Um, can be pretty good, and to me, he's like a Johnny Smith. So I like Tommy Tremble though overall. 
Then number five, we have Trey McKinney. This is a guy that a lot of people are either very hot or very cold on, and I'm kind of right in the middle. Yet again, another guy that can be a boomer bust player. To me, I think Jared Cook is a fantastic um, fit or a comparison for him because he is a pretty good receiving, um, not a pretty good, he is a good receiving tight end. Uh, the blocking is okay. Where he does lack is the physicality. For his size, he definitely doesn't ever try to like bowl anyone over. Um, you know, blocking for him, he's not going to last more than a few seconds. Um, yeah, uh, so I think Jared Cook is a great uh, fit for him. And, you know, I, I don't know. Trey McKinney, I get why people dislike him because he is a pretty boomer bust player. But I also get why people like him because he is a boomer bust player. Uh, so I have him right here in the middle. He's a pretty good tight end. And depending on the scheme, could be pretty good for whatever team takes him. Then number six, we have Hunter Long out of Boston College. And Zach Ertz, I think this guy reminds me of Zach Ertz a lot. Uh, another third-round tight end. And another guy that really has that ceiling to be the number one tight end for a team. Um, he could be as good or if not better than Zach Ertz. Um, and at worst, I think he is gr a great blocking tight end. Because that's really where Hunter Long uh, thrives is his physicality. Um, not only in just blocking, but as well as, you know, running his routes. You know, he's very aggressive at the point of catch. Um, where he lacks in his game is his speed, his athleticism, which is why he reminds me of Zach Ertz a lot, um, since I don't think Zach Ertz is that athletic of a player. Um, but yeah, so he reminds me of Zach Ertz a lot. Another guy that can be that number one great tight end or could just be depth. But the thing with Hunter Long is he's a bit of a safer pick because at worst you're getting some good blocking depth. But I just think because of his limitations with his athleticism and his speed, um, he'll probably drop. He could even go to the fourth round. So I have him here at my tight end number six. Then at number seven, we have Kenny Aboa out of uh, Mississippi. Um, Kenny Aboa is one of those interesting players where he's good at literally everything, but he's not great at anything. And that's, that's what makes him such a good, safe prospect. I think he'll go somewhere around fourth round. He could sneak up in the third because he is such a safe prospect. Um, you know what you're getting with him. He's never going to be an elite player. I don't even think he'll ever be a tight end number one, but he could be the best tight end number two in the league. And at the very worst, he's very solid depth. So, you know, Kenny Yaboa is a guy that definitely can pick up. If, if he, you know, gets better at running routes, he'll be a very good tight end. If he gets better at just straight up catching, He'll be a very good tight end. He's good at everything, and he's not bad at anything, but he's not great at anything. So an interesting player here, but I still really like Kenny Yaboa. Um, yeah, I think he'll be a pretty solid player, and kind of like Mike Gesicki. You know, Mike Gesicki is one of those players where he's good at everything, but he's not great at anything. Um, and these are also both guys that can actually play in the slot pretty well. Kenny Yaboa has really nice speed um, for his size, so yeah. Then at number eight, we have Jack Stoll. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know who this guy was until I watched um, that franchise's guy's tight end rankings. And, uh, you know, after he started talking about him, I went and looked. And, yeah, this guy's actually a really good tight end. Now, he's here at number eight because, um, you know, playing in Nebraska, naturally, you're not playing the best competition all the time. And that is especially for offensive players. Um, but if you look at this guy's game, like for the competition he played, I don't know why he didn't get more hype because he is maybe the best blocker in this class, but as a receiving tight end, he's also really, really good. I think he'll go somewhere around fifth, could sneak up into the fourth round. And he is a very boomer bust product because the way he played at Nebraska could just be because of the competition he played, but you know, my comp for him is George Kittle. He can kind of be like George Kittle where he's one of those more, you know, underrated tight ends coming out of college. And then maybe a year now from two, I mean, Jack Stoll could be one of the best tight ends in football. Um, I really like what he's shown. So as long as, you know, the way he's played wasn't just due to the competition. Um, and, and he dealt with some injuries in his senior year, uh, which is part of why he got replaced. So, you know, depending on uh, the circumstances and if the the competition was the only reason he was good, this guy could be a big bust or he could be the next great tight end. But either way, I really like what I've seen from Jack Stoll. Then at number nine, we have Noah Gray. And I mean, this guy just reminds me a lot of like OJ Howard, but he's a bit shorter. So I, I'd say he's a shorter OJ Howard. 
Uh, I think about six round is great for him. Um, another player that, you know, is pretty boomer bust. However, the boom for him is being like a tight end number two. Um, I expect he'll probably just be depth, which is why you're taking him pretty late here. As a route runner, he's very, very good. Very speedy and hyper athletic, um, just like OJ Howard. But where he does really struggle is his blocking. And um, that's why he could easily be a bust because, you know, if you're not going to be the number one or even the number two tight end for your team, you need to be a good blocker as a tight end. And if you suck at blocking, this guy has to this guy has to be good at everything else to be the number one or number two on a team um, if he wants to stay in the league, which is why I have him down here at number nine. Now, I do like the potential from him. And like I said, the route running is very, very good for a tight end, um, one of the best in the class. But just the, the blocking is a big issue and I don't know if he's necessarily good enough to be the number one tight end so he could be a pretty big bust and he might honestly slip to the seventh maybe even undrafted and then at number 10 we have Nick Eubanks out of Michigan um my comp for him is a dollar store Derek Hen or Derek Henry Hunter Henry um very athletic person and that's where it's kind of strange because for how athletic he is um he really lacks in speed and, you know, seeing a lot of these more speedier, athletic tight ends nowadays, um, you know, it's kind of weird to see an athletic tight end who's not speedy. Um, when it comes to actually just, you know, receiving, route running, he's um, he's okay. You know, he reminds me a lot of Hunter Henry just because, you know, Hunter Henry's uh, pretty athletic, but not the fastest guy in the world and creates the catches out of contact. And that's what reminds me of... Uh, that what that's what reminds me of Hunter Henry so much is that you know he creates his catches based out of contact, um, and he's pretty athletic, but just not the fastest guy in the world. Another late round guy that you know, at best I see being the maybe number two tight end. Um, if not, he's a decent depth because he can actually block. Um, so you know I wouldn't call him a safe prospect, but I wouldn't call him a good prospect, but I wouldn't call him a bad prospect. Some of the tight end prospects are pretty weird this year, but um, yeah, that's Nick Eubanks. Uh, but that is going to be the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a like so you never, uh, well, you need to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Not the like button, although the like button is appreciated. Um, offensive line next, so be first in line for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see all you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.